Welcome to Jalassa News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and Jalassa assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some thought-provoking articles. First up, Bitcoin could surge to $3 million within five years, says crypto hedge fund manager, and here's why. And I have to tell you, the reasoning he gives behind it is weak. And we talked about how Bitcoin could potentially reach 500K. And at first I was against it, but then when we ran the numbers, it made sense. But this is just plain irresponsible. Also, Brian Brooks, the acting director of the OCC, or the Office of the Comptroller of Currency, states that he is against government-issued digital dollar, but supports regulation of privately issued stable coins. This is going to go hand in hand with our first article. And I have to tell you, this makes a ton of sense what he is talking about. And bad news for gold bugs, central banks dump gold for the first time in 10 years as precious metal drops 9% since August high. And we're going to talk about what's going on with this, the whole issue behind scarcity, and how I believe Bitcoin is going to massively eat into the market share of gold. It's only a matter of time. And finally, more good news for Cardano as they reach a major milestone as far as decentralization. This Friday is going to mark the first time that they're going to have over 50% of independent mining pools mining the network, which means Cardano is fully decentralized. So we get to all that, but let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is November 2nd. It is 1.30. I got to get going because I got to go hit some balls with Wen Mullet. So what do we got today? So Bitcoin is down almost 2%, uh, but up 3.8 for the uh, seven-day average. And we're just teetering around that 13.5. Look, uh, presidential election is tomorrow. Uh, it's going to come out. It's going to not be resolved tomorrow. It's not going to be resolved in 24 hours after that or 48 hours. And it could take up more like a week, maybe a month. We will see. But I am expecting uh, severe instability in this nation. I saw a report that uh, a lot of businesses are closing up shop. They are boarding up because of the potential protests that are about to go down. And uh, it's about to get ugly. So, of course, when you have this, investors don't like this instability. And uh, that's okay. If you want to put it into cash, if you think cash is, you know, really good for you, then that's fine. But I'm just telling you right now, uh, this is fantastic news for me and you because the price will go down because of the instability and we can pick it up for cheap. It's just one of those things. Anyhow, Ethereum also is going down. I can I can only tell you this. I, I can only see the prices going down over the next well, week unless some miracle happens where one person is like the clear cut winner as far as who's going to be the president. But that's not going to happen. So Ethereum down 0.8%, still at 385, not too bad. Tether is sitting around 16 billion market cap. Uh, XRP, which was pegged the quarter, is now slipping. And now they're looking at around 23 cents, but hopefully they make it up to that 25 cent range. Who knows? Bitcoin cash on 4%, Chainlink down. You know what we should do? Let's just talk about what's up. That's a probably an easier one. Uh, CDI and Leo token, wow. Neo is up 3%. I used to own Neo, long time ago. NEM is up almost a percentage, watch out. Uh, what else we got? Uh, absolutely nothing. So, yeah. Oh, UMA is up 1.7. So, congratulations, UMA holders. You're up almost 2%. So, again, uh, it's going to get a little a little hairy around here for a while. But remember, uh, me and you are used to this stuff, right? We've been in the game for a while. Uh, there is no uncertainties as far as like what we know is going to happen. Of course, it's going to go down. Of course, it's going to be instable. And that's okay because when these things happen, it's just like a little sale. Could be a little sale. Could be a big sale. Don't know. But uh, I can tell you, uh, just watch out because it's going to be fireworks the next uh, 48 to 72 hours. All right, let's get some good news. So Bitcoin could surge to 3 million within five years. So we did a video about Bitcoin hitting 500K. And I was like, that is just ridiculous. Uh, but then when we ran the numbers, you know, market cap calculator, we came out we're like, OK, you know, if if Bitcoin hits to 500,000, that means that it has a nine trillion dollar market cap, which seems kind of ridiculous right now. But if you look at how much money there is in the world, which uh, there is this great graphic that I show, which uh, there is, you know, a quadrillion dollars out there just waiting to, to have help from something, probably Bitcoin. And uh, I mean, just gold alone has 11 trillion. I mean, come on, gold. How great is that? I mean. Besides the fact it's been around for thousands of years, if you created gold today, right now, no, no, okay, let me back up. If you created gold 20 years ago and someone said, said here, you can have gold, which is 20 years old, or you can have Bitcoin about what it all does, super portable, censorship resistant, decentralized, it's completely scarce at 21 million gold. Well, you might find some more and portable. Well, that's kind of heavy you can get out. And, you know, if there's some kind of riot, well, good luck getting that out of there. And then uh, as far as transparent, <laughs> no. So 
uh, I think it, it, of course, it would lose. However, uh, that's the great thing about gold. It's been around for thousands of years. Now, I personally believe everybody should have gold, silver, Bitcoin. I'm not saying if you're a gold bug, I'm not uh, dismissing you, but I'm just saying that you should have all three. That's all. That's all I'm going with. But when we talk about this three million dollar price tag, I just sometimes I just I hate these types of articles because it gives people false hope. And when they see this, like, oh, it's going to three million, they just they FOMO in, they do stupid things. So first of all, don't FOMO in dollar cost average. Second of all, if it's gonna, it's not going to three million. Okay, I mean, if it does, I'll be happily wrong. I'll be the first person to be like, hey, you know what, I was wrong. But uh, I'm on my yacht, so I really don't care. So again, I don't think it's going to happen. If it does, great, but I don't see it. Anyhow, stick in the article. So Morgan Creep Digital Assets co-founder Jason Williams says Bitcoin could meteorically rise uh, a ton. He states Bitcoin could hit one to three million dollars in the next five years. All right, sure. And his reason is, is because people have no idea what it will look like when large banks and countries start holding Bitcoin in their treasury. <sighs> and I'm thinking to myself, first of all, that is assuming that that will actually happen. And second of all, our I mean, are countries really going to do that or are they going to hold central bank digital currencies? That is the real question because I just don't see it. I don't see it. Now, I could be wrong. Let me know in the comment section, but I'm just saying that's what I see. Do I think Bitcoin could hit 500K? Yes, I do. Do I think it's uh, probable? I'm not saying it's going to like 100%, but it could happen. Me personally, I'm very conservative. I see it at 150K. That's where I'm going with, and it only makes sense it can go that high in the very near term. I'm talking like 2021. So when they're talking about uh, 3 million, I'm like, come on, come on, don't don't put that out. Anyhow, the crypto hedge fund manager highlights Bitcoin scarcity as a key characteristic that will attract more institutional players and continue to drive the value of the king cryptocurrency. So, I mean, of course, I'm a big Bitcoin believer. Uh, and of course, it is very, it's not even scarce, it's finite. There's a big difference between scarcity. Gold is scarce. You know, I mean, really, you want to think about it. It's kind of hard to find. But when you do find, there's a lot of it. I mean, these different mines that were just uh, discovered uh, just this last two weeks. So, sure. But, uh, I mean, it is finite. 21 million, hard cap, never going to find any more. That's it. So, on that point, yeah, I totally give it away. And I can see that. And that's pretty much the whole article. And I'm like, well, that's lame. So, I'm like, where did they get this information? So, they got this uh, this is from uh, a Medium article, and they had interviewed a bunch of different uh, power players in the space. And there was a lot of good information here, and it's super long, and some of it's kind of boring. So I'm just going to summarize it because I don't want you to fall asleep. So this was good. This was Jeff Booth, author of Price of Tomorrow, and he states, and, I, and I, we know this, but the way he puts it was really good. He says, if I had to pick just one advantage, and there are many, it would be its portability, which will allow it to serve. And he's talking about Bitcoin. Bitcoin's portability will allow it to serve as a lifeboat to the, to the coming economic storms. By portability, I mean that when governments confiscate your money, and they will through inflation, capital controls, taxes, otherwise, most people won't see it coming because of their wealth is concentrated in one currency. And you have to remember, uh, if, you know, people say, well, that's only third world countries. Well, guess what? It happened in the United States. They came around, they took people's gold, they said it was illegal to hold gold, and that happened in the U.S. of A. The land of the free, the home of the brave. So if you think it can't happen, well, it already did. And if you think it won't happen again, well, potentially it will. Because history likes to repeat itself. Again, I'm not saying it's going to happen tomorrow. I'm just saying be prepared. It is why, and then continuing on, it says, it is why people get stuck as a revolution caused by failing economic conditions take hold. Their wealth becomes trapped. With Bitcoin, if you can remember 12 words, you can move your wealth anywhere in the world. So that's the thing about gold. If you have gold, and you're in some type of uh, economic collapse, you're in some type of country where things are just going super sideways, uh, good luck getting that gold out because it's not just you and the government, it's you, the government, and everybody else around you who is an economic collapse that wants exactly what you want. So again, if you got Bitcoin and you know 12 words, you're good to go and you can go anywhere you want on the planet. So that was a great one and I, uh, I, I really liked that piece. And then of course, uh, Raul Powell, he had just came out with a pretty good video called the Bitcoin Life Raft, Bretton Woods 2.0. I watched some pieces of it. It's very interesting. Uh, you can check it out. Just, uh, you know, Google Raul Pal Bretton Woods. It'll come up. But what he says is what's it's what's going to come into a play in our very next article. And this is interesting. He says to truly stop a recession from becoming a widespread economic collapse, it is likely that as the International Monetary Fund, 
or IMF has already proposed, the world will become underpinned by central bank digital currencies or CBDCs. With this thesis in mind, Powell goes on to contemplate that this is because central banks want to be able to give people money directly, but they can't do that right now. And that is a scary prospect. Can you imagine a central bank that says, you know what, here's what we're going to do. We're going to give everybody an app and we're going to send them the money over and guess what we can do? We can track everybody and it's no big deal. It's not even like we don't even need a warrant because we can just have all the information there. Of course, we can say we're not going to do it, but you know they're going to do it. Come on, come on. So that is a, a non-starter for me. I just, I just don't see it. Now, I have nothing to hide, like everybody likes to say, or maybe I do. Whatever. It's, no, it's, it's, the, it's nobody's business of the government to look into my finances. Unless, of course, they're auditing me, then of course, I, can, I can't say much because I've been through one of those. So if central banks were able to create and distribute CBDCs en masse, they would be able to theoretically expand their balance sheets forever since they would then be in charge of both creating and distributing money that governments give value to. So essentially, they are the judge, jury, and executioner, and they can do whatever they want. The governments could step in, but at that point, it's kind of like a moot point because they're like, oh, no, sorry, you, you know, we're, we're, we're running the show. Grab some bench. We'll call you when we need you. And of course, Raul says we would all be stuck in a new monetary system in which nothing is anonymous and behavioral economics rule the day. So this is happening right now in China. So imagine this, you are a citizen of whatever country. CBDCs are getting issued, you're excited to get an app, but then something happens where, for whatever reason, you wanna protest against the government. They don't like that, and what do they do? They go, well, let's take a look at Jane Smith, and maybe we should shut down her account, or maybe we should reduce the amount that's in there, because we can, if we can bring it to you, we can take it right back. Or, what would be probably even smarter, is they just do a complete audit of what you purchased, and then they drag you in, through the IRS or whatever uh, agency that it is and goes, hey, we want to take a look at these uh, transactions you're doing because they look a little suspicious. They almost look like money laundering. And do you know anybody as far as like with terrorist ties? I mean, look, it's a slippery slope and it can, it can happen real fast. That's all I'm saying. So lastly, this is the only ray of light in this whole article. He concludes that Bitcoin is a way out of that future due to its digital scarcity and the fact that it can never be manipulated by the IMF, which is true. That is the great thing about Bitcoin. You cannot manipulate it. It is open source. There's only 21 million. You cannot create more. But with CBDCs, you can really create as much as you want to. It's only limited by your imagination. And that is a scary thing. And when I read this, I know Lagarde, whatever her name is uh, from the IMF, they are actually going to trial a CBDC. Uh, it is all over the globe. Europe is looking into it. Australia is looking into it. Russia is looking into it. So kind of depressing. However, here's a silver lining. 